Hello everyone, this is a speedrun, any percent run of Resident Evil 2 Remake on Leon's B scenario on consistent mode. Alright, so, so the version that you are watching this run from is played on the PlayStation 4 version, and this is played on 30 FPS. Not 60, 30 FPS. Long story short, uh, so... Basically, the 30 FPS version of Resident Evil 2 Remake is, by the way, uh, with comparing it with frame rate, it's like, it's like the hardest version of the game, um, with certain elements on a choruses on, on what I'm going to explain here, is that, um, so basically, uh, it's not the Jap the Japanese version of Resident Evil 2 Remake, this is not the Japanese version at all, this is the long box American version of Resident Evil 2 Remake, but, um, the Japanese version is either not the is not a uh, easier version of the game at all. It is pretty much the exact same like the American version, but it's like you know censored horror version for zero Z for fifteen and up. And the Japanese version, long story short, that's like a different topic we can talk on a little bit later. But um, however, and it, um, comparing it to the original game version, from it being the the original game Japanese version of the game being the easiest Leon, version of the game. I'll be right the American version of Resident Evil 2 Remake is... And the Japanese version are the hardest versions of the game. The differences from the versions that are less different and, like, probably, like, a little bit more easier, I guess, is the frame rate. The frame rate has a lot to do with the versions of the game, pretty much. So... If you're playing, long story short, here's how this goes. So if you're playing on 30 FPS, it is the easiest version of, it's the, if you're playing on 30 FPS, it's the hardest version of the game. Because there, you can't really do so much knife cheese, you can't really do so much with like fight, fighting enemy AI courses and dodges are very different than they are on 20 FPS. And it is not the most consistent part, uh, consistent frame rate to speed run the game on. Of you are playing on 60 FPS, it is in the middle of that, tentatively, because enemies on console are more aggressive. Like, on frame rate differences, on 30 FPS and 60 FPS, enemies are very aggressive, and more than likely, they're really annoying as hell to dodge in a speedrun, more, more, more tough to dodge in a speedrun. On 20 FPS, on the PC version, they're less aggressive a little bit, just a little bit of a smidget. Because sometimes on hardcore, they don't really, like, noticing the differences on hardcore, they don't really lunge more than twice on hardcore. So, yeah. Just keep that in mind from the version differences on console and PC and stuff like that on the versions of speedrunning the game. Alright, so, basically here. Um, so, the B scenarios is... What you're playing here is called the B scenarios here. It is the part two first side of the player, first side of the character, basically. So, if you completed... So, long story short, if you completed... Leon A, then you'll unlock Claire B, basically. Then you'll unlock Claire B and stuff like that, and that source. If you unlock Claire A, then you'll unlock Leon B. Which is pretty much a different version, like, pretty much is like... Which is pretty much the reverse side of the character, so you're getting... So if you complete the game with, like, play, complete the A scenarios, then you'll lock the B scenarios on whichever character you're playing as. So you're getting the full story, and you're getting the full ending on what happened after. Like, you're getting the other side of what was going on on the other side of the RPD, while the other side character was doing something, and you're getting, like, you're noticing that in the A scenarios. It's basically that differences in short presence, pretty much. That's basically what the A scenario, the B scenarios, is about. So yeah, keep that in mind. Um... So coming up here, we're going to uh, go on ahead and knock down the zombies' legs here. Going ahead, going on ahead and knock down these guys' legs. There's a higher chance you can pass around none of them without having to shoot them. But I mean, there is a chance you can pass around none of them without shooting them. But you know, just gonna go ahead and get rid of them. Even the zombies in the great out graveyard, you could throw. You could. There is a possible chance you could. I don't know. You have to throw a hand grenade at them. But honestly, it will require a lot of practice, and I recommend just straight up getting rid of them there. So we can get the key card and the shotgun, pretty much. I got the shotgun in this run, by the way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the east side safe room here. The east side is activated. So we can go here in the B scenarios and go pick up the fuse, 
we're going to put away the can handgun and then we're going to put away the the regular handgun from the ace scenarios and then we're going to put away the uh then we're going to go on ahead and put away the key and then we're out pretty much and we're on our way um so and because because um in the because you're Because they're forced to go on ahead and go pick up the fuse here, I don't know why the... Because, like, we picked up the... Because, like, you're forced to, like, pick up the fuse, you have to unlock the store here. Um, which you already unlock in the eight scenarios. I don't actually get why you have to... That all over again. It's pretty linear. But, um... However, um... I'm just gonna come out here in the RPD. Uh, Zomzom right here. Gonna shoot him in his leg. Hello? And the cross hits sent on towards him. Is any... You know, each just pick up the side pack and pick up the med spray and then leave. Then we're on our way. Then we're going. Well, we're gonna go on ahead and pick up this board here. And then we're on our way, pretty much. And after that, uh, it's gonna. We have to work a lot harder just to get out of that corner there, of course. But um, there's a liquor here in the B scenarios. So what I do here, the liquor here in the B scenarios, is I decided to just walk for a little bit. Like I strafe and walk for a little bit, and then put the board up here so we can prevent RNG from interfering with us in the piece in, 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 in the RPD2. But I start walking for a little bit and put that board up, and when I get to the other side of the corner, I'm just gonna start running. It doesn't really matter for this looker here if he hits me or grabs me or not, and I have to use the dagger or not. I honestly got tired of resetting here, so the dagger and the flashbang is just an insurance plan. I mean, the dagger and the crank, I mean, the dagger and the med spray are just an insurance plan just to keep the run going. That's why I picked them up. Um, just gonna ignore that fuse. We're not picking up the, uh, we're, we're not gonna steal your right value around a little bit too much. We're just gonna pick up the shotgun, actually. The reason why I picked up the shotgun in this run is so I can balance out the game in all the perfect ways it can handle, I guess. But, uh, anyhow. So, uh, for the zombies here, we're gonna go ahead and shoot them in their legs, and obviously we have to work a lot harder just to get the auto lane to connect. To shoot those guys in their legs, unfortunately. But um, we're gonna come all the way over here. We're going to just knock down their legs so they don't get in our way as we're picking up the shotgun in here. And then we're gonna just straight up leave. Just gonna reload the shotgun as we're leaving, basically. Um, so we could do that. Um, so basically coming up the stairs here. Uh, everybody's all the zombies are active on our team. One, pretty much, for the B scenarios. So we have to get rid of some enemies here, here and there. The shotgun here. Um. There's a female zombie there by the stairs. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of her because otherwise she, long story short, she, she could get directly in your way, pretty much, um, as you're coming up in here. Because sometimes what she likes to do is she sometimes likes to be a jerk and likes to grab you on the way out because she can follow you through this room here. And with any luck, you, with any non-luck, you can pretty much get grabbed by her on the way out of this area here. We're not gonna go the other way here. We're just gonna take this side here so we don't spawn Mr. X. The shotgun in Resident Evil 2 Remake, uh, bursting the shotgun in Resident Evil 2 Classic, is actually nerf. It is actually nerf from the original game. So, basically, the range of decapitating zombies is a lot shorter and a lot non tolerably stronger. It is a pretty slow base waste gun, pretty much, that doesn't do so much on constant momentum on enemy AI-wise. So it's not really the best quote-unquote gun to use so well -y sometimes. But I still kept it because I thought it would balance out the game a little bit, long story short. Um, get to that in a little bit. Gonna shoot these guys here in their heads, basically. Doesn't really matter. We're not coming back in this area ever again. So in case you didn't hear Mr. X in the background, Mr. X was fully active in case you didn't pay attention. He's fully active in the B scenarios, by the way. And... He gets to straight up uh, be fully active if, if he wants, pretty much here. We're not, as long as we get the RPD-1 done fast as possible, we won't have to worry about Mr. X. But uh, pretty much, uh, we have to, we will have to worry about him in RPD-2, but on RPD-1, we won't have to worry about him at all. So, because there's, because, you know, as long as we're fast enough, we won't have to worry about him, pretty much. That's all we have to, that's all we're straight up going for anyway, is speed. So, of course, we're not going to worry about Mr. X like that. He's gonna get in our way once on RP2, and that's about it. He's just chasing us all the goddamn time in the basic B scenarios. He's active immediately. So shit's so once he comes to the RPD, shit will pretty much hit the fan and everything will get started immediately. Depending on what you did with Claire here. 
Um, so, uh, we're gonna go on ahead and push these dressers here, pretty much, and we're gonna shoot this guy here in his leg. I go on ahead and get rid of these zombies in the room here, because, long story short, they can actually be a problem. I guess the Misty's not really so much a problem sometimes, but the... But she can follow you outside that room there, that we had to, the door we had to get to you. I go and hit decapitate these, some of these zombies here, the female zombie and him, pretty much, of, depending on the female zombies in my way or not. But the Misty's not always in my way like that, so I don't have to worry about it so much. But, um, she can... They can be a pretty much a problem, by the way, because uh, sometimes what they do is they like to... Uh, they sometimes like to uh, be dicks and just straight up uh, fuck your shit over when you come back through here on R32 and get directly in your way as you're just trying to straight up get everything down pretty much and finish everything up quickly as possible. So, uh, basically, uh, you have to, in order to avoid little comps and immense them from these guys, uh, you have to, uh, you have to pretty much, uh, get RP1, uh, RPT2 down. You have to pretty much just go ahead and get rid of them, honestly. I just recommend just killing those guys. Just shoot them in their leg just to get rid of them. And just knock them down and stuff like that. That's basically what I recommend with the shotgun, basically. Um, so because you get the shotgun right off the bat in the, um, in the... Because you can get the card easily. Um, I just went on ahead and just picked that up for that, per that, that personal resources, pretty much. Um, so, so basically, yeah, you could think what you like about all the ammo that has been stored in my inventory here, um, yeah, but, uh, this ammo is planted and routed for this whole run, pretty much, so I can get everything down here, especially, specifically for this boss as well, too, so I can choose Birkin. Birkin with the shotgun is gonna take a little bit of a while, but, um, you know, you gotta be a little bit aware on how you're spacing with him, pretty much. It's gonna be a little tricky and very tough. So we're just gonna strafe, blast him, uh, blast shells at him, basically as much as we can. Uh, if we're close enough, we can cause a little bit more damage, but not always recommended to get a little too close. Sometimes Burke likes to be a piece of shit. Throw a hand grenade here, and we're gonna reload the shotgun at three shells, and knock him down here. Got lucky and down him, actually, unfortunately. I also like a little bit of lucky RNG. But, uh, this was like a, this was like a, not really a bad fight, basically, with the RNG I got here. So, got lucky and knocked him down quicker, quicker enough than I actually didn't expect it. But, um, because the shotgun is very slow at recovery time, and it's one of the crappier guns in this game with the recovery time, the recovery time in this game with a shotgun is pretty shitty. So because it's like, the recovery time after blasting a shell at an enemy is pretty shitty, you have to, uh, you have to stay far away as you can, uh, from the enemy whenever you're blasting a shotgun shell at them, but you have to get close if you're gonna decapitate a zombie, unfortunately. But, um, because the recovery time is shitty, though, I recommend just straight up, uh, for Birkin there, just because he's gonna take a while with a shotgun, and it's not gonna do so much on towards him so well -y. but we just have to be, um, a lot crops and aware, like, we gotta just straight up back up as much as we can and stand our ground during that boss, because if we don't move away from Birkin during that boss, then he's more than likely to fuck hey, our shit over, I'm and not done talking to you. straight up grab us or attack us or whatever he wants to do, it's pretty annoying. So we have to straight up uh, back up as much as we can and stand our ground there in that whole boss in order to avoid, in order to avoid, um, in order to avoid him from hitting us or grabbing us. So we could just straight up have to do that. Um, gonna pick up the crank here. Um, then after that, uh, same as usual, we're gonna just straight up go all the way out to the dog area because for some, because Leon has to deal with dogs. In Leon's runs, you have to deal with dogs. And, uh, we're gonna equip the shotgun out here for the dogs, because the reason why is because dogs in this game are dicks. And I can't fucking stand them so goddamn much. And because they're fucking annoying as hell to dodge, and a dodge in a just a record 80% run with Leon, I'm just gonna go ahead and blast her asses pretty much once we come in here. 
and get rid of their asses because they're fucking annoying as hell. So basically, you know, overall, um, with the shotgun, what I do here with the courses here with it, with it, is that I just straight up um make sure whatever I'm like using it, I like make sure like the enemies I'm going to be killing is enemies that I have a horrible time dodging in the A scenarios. Of it's an enemy that I don't have a hard, hard time dodging in A scenarios, then I'm not going to use it on them. Specifically, just for that, of course, it's for reasons and stuff like that. The shotgun is not so much good for so much, I guess, on teaching you on how to dodge, but how to avoid dodges, but I just pick it up anyway because I think it balances the game in all the perfect ways it needs to. Just in order for it to balance the any percent scenario, I just picked it up for that particular courses. Obviously. It's just like, if I have a hard time dodging an enemy like I normally do in the A scenario run, then I normally would just straight up kill like an enemy. With the shotgun here in the B scenarios, that's basically what the courses is. Such as that guy. But, uh... In general, some of the enemies that are easy to dodge in the ace scenarios is Leon. You know, I can just straight up dodge them because they're easy to dodge because there's consistent 100% dodges for them. For such as that dog, because that dog's pretty easy to dodge. All I have to do is just straight up, when I get to the cage, as I make a turn immediately, turn left immediately, and just go the other way. Pretty easy to dodge. He likes to attack the door for some reason. There are some shotgun shells in that room we just passed by, by the way, but you could pick them up if you want. Same thing with the shotgun shells over here, right over here in the corner, but that'll be like a waste of time doing that, so we're not just gonna straight up avoid that. But the reason why I use the mid-1911 here to shoot them in their legs, or shoot them in their heads in order for them to take hit stun is because, you know, the collision boxes on the zombies with their arms is way too wide. Like, their arms are way too fucking big for the collision box to just jet forward a little bit and for you to decapitate them. And their arms are their main protector. Like, they, they'll, they'll protect yourself with their arms, pretty much. And you'll only decapitate their arms. You can't even decapitate their limbs, pretty much. And it's pretty shitty that the shotgun can only do that with the limbs. I think the, I think the Resident Evil 3 shotgun is... I guess I should say a little bit more tolerably better, I guess. A little bit. Just uh, just a smidge. But, um, anywho. Just gonna pick up the crank, same as usual. Pretty much pick up the flashbang. And we're out here. But like I said, I just think it would just balance out the game just picking up the shotgun anyway. Because whatever, I'm not going for compelling world records with the, with the strat here. I honestly don't care. It's just simple any percent. Just take it as that. Then we could just go ahead and go into inventory, delete the crank after we pick up those items, and then we're just gonna straight up go all the way down here. And here's another such instance where I like to use the shotgun at, pretty much. To get rid of these guys. Also be aware on consistent mode that there is auto-aim, so you have to be aware that sometimes uh, on consistent mode you, you'll get your fuck shit, your, you'll get your shit fucked over by the auto-aim as you're shooting enemies. I'm not actually sure if I should visit the item box here. There was actually no reason for me to. The auto aim in consistent mode tries to fuck with your aiming a lot, and I don't know how to turn it off, but I wish there was an option to turn it off. Because it just fucks with the aiming system so wellly, and it fucking annoys the hell out of me as I'm sh fucking trying to cheese zombies with the shotgun or the lock launcher. Anyhow, uh, so we're gonna come over here and. Same as dodge as usual with Mr. X. Gonna Shit. get a little lucky here. Uh, to dodge him. Sometimes he likes to be a dick and just like to be a uh, sinker. Sinkers are basically when zombies are just straight up like, or enemies just don't even bother attacking you. They just delay their attacks until they crowd you. Pretty shitty. Or if they're a shambler, if they're a shambler, they just attack early by range. Like five second, five like ranges of frames. Scoop right by here. Ignore everything. I got tired of resetting here. This is like the pro problem here with Leon B. That can be pretty much a pain in the ass. Uh, the liquor over here, I go ahead and reset him. Running out the room and running back in the room. 
and I'll cause that looker to uh, leave the area, pretty much. The looker on my end, right here, left, and he didn't get in the way this time. The other looker that you normally see that that normally doesn't despawn. He's still in the area. He doesn't despawn. He only despawns, basically. He, no, he doesn't despawn. The second looker, he doesn't despawn. He stays in the area permanently. He's just near the zombies over there on the other side of the corner, basically. But, uh, by doing all this fast enough, we can pretty much avoid Mr. X here, but there is a higher chance he can just get in your way directly here. Marvin's being a dick here, so I'm just going for a lead shot. I swear, I gotta memorize a lot of movement in this game uh, before I start dodging sometimes. Yeah. But, uh, Miss the Misty in here, normally I don't even have to kill her, basically. It just depends if she's just directly in my way or not. Because all she does is straight, straight up directions in B scenarios. Like, she's not like she is in A scenarios, and she just cocks blocks your way a lot. And just fucks up your options of dodging her. Um, in the A scenario, in the B scenarios, she just, she just, she just likes to not really get in the way. If she is in the way, I just do a leg shot on her, knock down her leg, or just kill her, pretty much. We got enough shotgun shells for that to kill her, but, you know. Let's try to get rid of her. I probably should have just paid attention to how many times I visited the audio box in this run. I'm pretty sure I visited, like, probably, like, five times or so. Not not five times, I'm gonna say three. No, three times or so. I, I, I probably, no. I'm pretty sure I was supposed to visit it, like, three times or so in this run. But, um... You know, um, the way I went with Leon A, Leon B here is that, uh, it's like, the way, um, I recorded this run in, like, in the course of four days, through, like, Thursday to Tuesday or so, um, so basically I, I didn't have so much, uh, there was not so much on the Leon B scenario that I had planned it out, that it was going to be a difference to the A scenario, Ups up for certain uh, optional courses here, here and there, but, uh, the only changes I had to make for my time in the run was just enemy AI courses I had to deal with, and that's my checkpoint right there, just keeps that guy. If any lucky enough, Mr. X won't really be blocking our way as we're dealing with these guys here. As long as you're fast enough, you don't have to worry about nothing. I got lucky with a decap on that guy. That was actually, that was actually shocking that I got a decap. I was kind of scared there he was gonna lunge at me for a second, but I got a decap. Um, so for uh, so there's not much to worry about until we deal with the dogs again. I think I should elaborate on something else right here. Is that um, what else I can talk about? So uh. The way I planned that out the route of the run here is I did did this originally at first without the shotgun. But uh I still stuck I went back to sticking with the shotgun here, basically just because I thought, like I said earlier, it will just balance out the game. Because there's so many weird because Leon has a big hitbox, there's so many mini dodges that are impossible to dodge. And I think you lose more time off of taking damage, more of you lose time off of just not taking damage. So, it's honestly what I had to stick with for the past recordings. Um, so for the dogs here, uh, gonna get a little lucky on dodging them here. Kinda actually have to be a lot pretendently careful. I got, like, scared there because I thought the dog was gonna actually jump at me the last moment there as I was getting close to the door. But, uh, I had to hope for the best that the dogs didn't hit me this time and I had to uh, did some checkpoints. Whatever you, unfortunately, whatever you keep dogs on camera, unfortunately, they just randomly decide to just, like, I don't know, they just randomly decide to just be, like, weirdos and just, like, like, dogs, like, get, I guess they get scared whenever you're on putting them on camera. Because I guess they just, like, their AIs are very confusing. Like, they, like, they, 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 they think that at for a second that they're not gonna, they think for a second they need to figure out how they can cheese you, but, like, you know. Like, if you have them on camera, they sometimes just freak out and just straight up not bother attacking you for some weird reason. And they like to try to keep- get, they like to try to run in front of you a lot, basically. Just so you can prevent them from being on camera. Like, they like to be, like, right- like, if you keep them from- your camera angle from behind, they'll just straight up, like, do that a lot. I have no idea why. Anyhow. 
Um, go pick up the Mets break here and the key card. That's not good. Same as you. Go straight to Dodger and Mr. X here. Hopefully, Bessie doesn't be a dick. Give me a straight. Break. And he decided to crowd here like an asshole. <laughs> Stupid asshole. Alright, so right here. Try to be careful uh, of what the flash being here. Because sometimes, uh, other, sometimes when you throw the flash ping, you gotta make sure it doesn't get thrown off of the hedges, basically. Because if it doesn't get thrown off of the hedges, basically, sometimes, randomly, it will just straight up, uh, not stun none of the zombies in the room. Which you can see there, it did not stun that other zombie. I got lucky, and I dodged him, and I went for the dodge, and I got lucky. But Mr. X obviously decided to be a dick and fuck me over, so I couldn't do so much about that. This is also a uh, force out of habit from the A scenario run. <laughs> I keep unequipping my handgun here, <laughs> even though I don't have to, because Leon, whenever Leon's B scenario mid nineteen eleven gun, it, whenever he equips it, it actually is like it actually um he actually doesn't have to fo he doesn't hold it from shoulder height like so he normally does with it. More info on the so because he like doesn't hold it from shoulder height, he doesn't like really like do something compelling with it. There's like no point of unequipping it. That's like force out of habit. Especially the fact that I have to kill myself there. Off of Mr. X being a dick. Because he decided to crowd and he went the wrong direction as I didn't want him to do, like a fucking asshole, so fuck him. On upon a realization that I realized the handgun was in a bad solution here, I had to just come up with another backup strategy and just say fuck it. Just go ahead and delete, put that in a different slot at the point. Honestly, just didn't care. Um, so uh, there's not much uh, commentate here for a little bit, so I'm gonna stay a little bit quiet basically for a while. Not much uh, commentate here, so I'm just gonna be put quiet a little bit. Based on what you've said, the sewer seems fitting. Gee, thanks. Can't imagine a real scientist being down here. Come on. Sewers are run by the city. How could they have a facility without the authorities knowing? Jesus! That an earthquake? Also, actually, I forgot to mention something. Uh, shout out to Curry underscore. Uh, I actually didn't. I actually found some unique tips that I learned from his route and his run with Leon B and Leon A. Um, so I actually found this like I don't even know what this does here basically, but I saw him did this, and I guess like this like causes the crocodile to, like like I don't know what happens. I guess this like if you turn the camera angle to the claustrophobic camera angle, where it's just like wiggles around a lot, basically, whenever Holy action's shit. going on the screen. I guess the crocodile attacks early. And attacks, like, quicker. But, like, I saw him turn this on. Curry underscore three. I recommend checking out his channel. He, like, runs, like, uh... He runs, like, on their console strat world record, pretty much. But, uh... I'll link his channel in the comment section below, but I saw him turn his on, basically, and I don't actually... Actually, kind of considering that this actually probably sleeps some time. I don't actually know from what, but, uh... Pretty interesting. It's hand grenade right up there, by the way, so... Just pick that up. Leon, up here. What the hell was... Just get up here. 
Maybe it's like Leon moving faster enough. I don't actually know. It's like you like he turned on like because of like collision checking. I don't know. You know something about that. Reptiles. That just seems a little bit faster. I don't know. It's like maybe it's like the crocodile's like attacking but by frames. I don't like that causes it like to move faster or something like that. I I I don't actually know. But but I recommend checking out Curry Underscore's runs basically of this game in the comment section below. I'll link his channel basically then and there. Shout out to him for finding like all these strats, like basically, because now the Our now that I found now that he found these strats, uh, I can make a little bit more improvements into this run. I am looking back at this, and I, I should have made a little bit more improvements, but uh, you know, this is the only thing I got for right now at the moment. But when I come back into the beast scenarios in the future, here's like another strat that I found seen that I did here is that. Um, after he went on and turned, down, turned off the camera angle thingy here, um, he also waited five seconds or so, or seven seconds, and he caused the door here to open up quicker instead of opening up slower. So, you, you can, you can't do that without actually losing five seconds, actually. So, shout out to him for writing that strat, basically saving us seconds to basically the run. And also, just like another strat that I sent some did as well too. There's like a lot of tips and tricks he showed with Ada. Yeah, I found very interesting. Like he did, he did. I'm actually sure. Like I don't actually remember seeing that strat though in the past before, but I guess I didn't. I just didn't notice. Um, anyhow, solving that so we can turn the light on. You know, not much going on for Ada session here. It's up some new tricks and tricks and slips. Only tricks are for kids and shit going on down here. I wish I can get a decap off that guy. I probably need to, might have to check in the future if I can see if I can get a decap luckily on him. But who knows? I'll like, probably miss the shots 400 times, so whatever. So, uh, next checkpoint here. Let's get to that corner there. That's basically when I turn on this. Basically, check where he's going. If he's going the opposite, I'm just going to go the other way. Because otherwise, I don't want him to grab me in my leg as I'm getting out of here, so fuck him. Just do not so I can avoid him. Got you now. I'm actually sure if I said the name right, I do apologize if it didn't. <laughs> but, uh... Not sure if he showed me this trick as well here too. Which I learned the timing point before I did that, but um anyhow. But uh I should mention something uh important here, basically, uh for when it comes to speedrunning. Of you are going to speedrun this game or speedrun some or speedrunning just any game in general. Is that uh important thing here that is very important for speedrunning is that to tell you this here is that this tricks right here, these tricks, like the aiming trick on down the stairs, that right there, that's not gonna save you hours. That's not even gonna save you that much of time. That's just gonna save you a couple of 10 seconds or so. That is not even gonna save you like more of an hour or so. Doing all these tricks and tips here are not gonna save you time. It's gonna save you seconds of time. What is going to save you time, and I mean time in hours in minutes or so, is going to be routing. Routing and learning and practicing the boss battles and the, what the world record does for the world, um, what the world record does for the boss battle strats. And planning will save you hours and minutes. So many hours, so many times, so many shit. It will save you a fucking generation, I'll tell you that. So planning and routing is going to save you time in a speedrun. And practicing the world record boss battle strats is going to straight up save you more time as well too. Because learning what they do and learning what the way they go with things instead of going nilly nilly on certain things is really what's going to actually help you out on boss battle strats. So much. Like literally so fucking much. So yeah, keep that, keep that in mind pretty much. <laughs> Now 
Enough with this cat and mouse game. Also, you can see this uh, deluxe edition costume I put on Leon pretty much. I just put that on because I didn't want you guys to get bored of basically seeing the same old, same old Leon costume. So I mix shit up around here. So, yeah. Uh, I should mention something important uh, that um, unlike the A scenario, there's like 10, there's not 10 handgun bullets here. Like there were in the A scenario, there's like about five bullets or so. So because there's like five bullets or so, you uh, you have to keep that in mind that uh, picking that up, uh, you gotta make sure you're at the right amounts of handgun bullets before you pick that up. Actually, so yeah, kind of fucked up a little bit of menuing here, but you know this was just like recorded like about four days or so, so I tried my best to. Not fuck up on certain caveats, but um, anyhow. Um, pass around the zombie as usual. Just get around him. Let's do a left shot on that guy. Fuck him. Alright, so here's the strat, the dodge I was talking about in the A, in the a scenarios that, uh, the dodge and the, the strat here in order to cheese the, uh, G mutant here, the G mutant skip dodge here that you could do in the B and the, the that I was talking about in the A scenarios. So because I have a shotgun, I could do this in the A scenarios here if I want. So here's how this goes: is that you pop him out of the water and stand by that position there, and then go. Simple as that. So the way this timing works is that you have to stand like about seven feet or so, not eight feet, seven feet or so, and order to dodge him like that. That's the run strat dodge. Now, if it's the waiting dodge, then you would have to wait three or two seconds or so, depending on which recovery time animation they do after you're out of the water. So the way that it goes, it's like it's complicated to explain. There's two ways it can go that makes it pretty, pretty, pretty complicated as hell to explain. But uh, on the caveat on it is that you do not want to stand five feet away. You do not want to stand three feet away that is kind of near because if you stand three feet then they'll jump out of the water and grab you and yeah. if you stand five feet then no 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 if you stand five feet it'll jump out of the water and grab you if you stand like three feet it'll cause hit sun out on you as you're jumping out of the water because these motherfucking G units are fucking big as fuck these jelly fuckers but um however though um on the caveat of that you have to keep in mind that uh, when you're shooting, when you're getting, when you're dealing with GB mutants, basically, it's like the dodges on them are very randomized. Like the recovery time is very fast, and it's very inconsistent to dodge them, and they're very frustrating as hell to deal, deal with. They're pieces of shits. So it will require a lot of bit of practice. So much goddamn practice, I'll tell you that. But we're gonna pick up the crank there because we, like I said in the A scenarios, these guys will be different positions here. But, uh, because we get the shotgun here, uh, and we pick up our NPD 2 we can just try to decapitate these guys. Get rid of them on the gurney here. If we just straight up decapitate those guys, we can just straight up get rid of them. And we don't have to worry about those guys ever again. So, uh, yeah. Because, you know, we don't have a chance to throw a hand grenade at them, but we can still just throw that... We can just go ahead and use shotgun shells and get rid of them simple as that or to dodge around them because otherwise if we don't spin we are more than likely to fuck that shit over and straight up get grab just be careful on the stairs as you see the shotgun because otherwise if you don't be careful then if you make wave like you're about to use a defense item but the zombies can randomly just like they can prevent you from using defense items when you're on the stairs by the way long story short there's a bug where they'll prevent you using defense items on the stairs same as you preach pick this up and leave Luckily, that guy decided to be a sinker and he didn't lunge at me as I was coming in. The room here. We pick up these shotgun shells here. Reload them.
But it's all on recovery time at that base there. Luckily, I didn't just get grabbed by him at that beat there. It's all... It's all just random. They, like, like sometimes humans randomly recover. Like, the recovery animation can be more of a, like, fast. Sometimes, sometimes. They could just recover way too fast. They recover more than one second sometimes. And they can recover more than two seconds. Or three seconds or so. But all those random RNG numbers is just gonna cause so much practice to be made in head and if you can't do nothing about it then you have to work with it personally shooting g means anyway is gonna be slow regardless if, if it's fast or not like it's all it's always gonna be slow so it doesn't even matter so much sometimes anymore oh my god the way the world record refers it on towards so yeah um there's zombies here in the b scenarios here this is gonna be a little tough but popping that guy out of the water there basically you can see that it's like i got lucky and that 270 for grabs miss and connect on the frame. So we're gonna put the shotgun here, basically. And it's gonna be a tough dodge. But uh, we gotta shoot that guy as we're getting a little bit gaining a little bit close with that tip, different types of range right there. We gotta go for a leg shot on that guy in order to get rid of him, because otherwise if we do not, then he will just straight up survive. Um, then he'll just straight up get rob us and we'll get hit. Because we can't use those hand grenades because we gotta save for that G mutant instead. And stuff like that and um also uh you know psalms up here get rid of them just gonna get rid of all of them you could just save flashbang here and just use it on them here but uh just going ahead to get rid of them here i don't get, get less shits about them so i just rather get rid of them and stuff like that so i don't have to worry about dumb pattern positions and stuff like that when they come down here um so uh so basically uh there's no optimization just like with the female zombie in the main rpd there's no opposition with that female, that with that zombie. You have to get rid of him in order to get him out of your way, because he's going to get directly in your way as you're getting out of here, pretty much. And even if you just straight up went for a simple dodge out of him, he's just going to get directly in your way, because if the humans are grouped up together with him. He's going to get completely in your way and fuck your shit over and ruin your run. Also, I should mention, by the way, the mid 1911 is stronger than the hand a scenario gun because it has a higher chance of going for crit rate shots and also. It's more than likely to cause it stun in the legs more easily. It's forced out of habit for me shooting zombies in heads and in their legs basically than their heads sometimes. So kind of have to have to live with it a little bit. But um, anyhow, yeah, and this human was in a terrible position and we were just walking away. I got lucky as hell and dodged him here pretty much just to get around him but whenever he blocks that position anyway it's most likely a higher chance of a run killer because we, we, we really have a higher chance of losing the run because him blocking that area there but i got lucky in leon's collision box for his hitbox just jet forward in and he passed around him that's where i got lucky with that dodge and i got lucky to get grab on the way out pretty much so pretty much like dodging genius like you can see here it's just, it's, it's always going to be slow basically because you have to get ready for there to make an attack like always always going to be slow so you can't do jumping about it I sure hope for the love of God that you save that hand grenade because we need to save that 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 one last hand grenade for Birkin to here basically in order to cheese him. So we're gonna put the Aries in that solution slot right there, and then put Taurus over there, and then put uh, pick up Cancer, and then put the Prius right over here, and then we're just gonna. Put Cancer right on this side, and put Ares right next to him over here on this side. And then we're done. Pretty much done, and now we can go fight G2. Um... Okay. Almost there, yeah. So I got tired of resetting off of the session with G2 here, because I got fucking pissed, pissed the fuck off off of him. Still blasting, like, even when I do throw the hand grenade sometimes, he likes to just still be a dick and just blast his arms through the crocs anyway basically because he sometimes doesn't like to cooperate here so i went on ahead and used my no death run strats basically here instead just to get this over with we're not going to take damage when this happens 
You take zero points of damage. That is just like a whole dramatic effect. But he used my no depth to run so fast to buy this whole thing here. Put a hand grenade, and then bam, he's done. Simple as that instead of doing the other one. Sometimes he doesn't like the crop rate. Um, I could blast some flamethrower rounds through this proc here, but there's no point in doing it. I lost uh, interest in using that strat, so I skipped it. Because I'd rather not waste ammo doing that strat at all, because there's no point in using it. It's a useless strat. Um, Birkin's charging at us. Um, I'm pretty sure you have iframes when this happens here. So, because I'm like pretty sure you have iframes when this happens here, you can straight up be quick about it. Knock him down here. Um, so, right here, for, because we're playing as Leon, we're going to scrape and we're going to burn him. And hope for the best he goes down uh, around when he gets a little bit close to range. Just get a little lucky. Like, a little bit lucky. Just, just barely enough luck just to get around him here. And then after that, we got to pay attention to the eyeballs during the rest of the fight here. Because pay attention to the eyeball. When the eyeball is red, that is basically when he's going to straight up be dead. We got to come out in one crank right here. And we got to keep him to the center here. And then after that, when he throws flashbang, he gets recovery up. And then we're just going to turn into different diagonal lines. And he's going to take a little while for him to attack. He only attacks um, from the other side of his arm, most likely a lot. So it takes him a little bit of a while before he tries to attack again sometimes. So sometimes he has to be staring at you. Sometimes here and there he doesn't have to be staring at you. Let's hope that's the last of them. Pretty easy and consistent to do it like that in that boss, pretty much. If we fucked that up and we had to do it, we, we have to take him out in like one crank. We cannot take him out in more than two cranks. If we take him out in two cranks, the run is over. Because we lost all that time. We could have straight, straight up saved. And we had to take him out in one crank. Nice. If we take him out in two cranks, it's done. And there's more of an, it's unlikely we're going to get that same attempt pattern again, so it's, it's over. Also, if you got poisoned by the G-Mutants as well, in the G-Mutant area, the run is over as well, too. Because, you know, you, you, you know, you, you gotta avoid, you gotta avoid taking damage, most likely. And poison mode gets you on yellow caution mode. It's like the same exact speed, but it, it, what, what it's like on yellow caution mode. So, yeah. And, you know, I just, you know, I just don't like taking damage. It's honestly one of the most annoying things I don't like to, to deal with. So, yeah. And I think that causes you to waste more time than you already are to, that, that you already are waste time on killing the enemies. So, yeah. Um... For the lab here, this is going to be complicated a little bit explained. This is just like one new strat that I use in the lab here. Um, going to empty the flamethrower rounds after 200 flamethrower rounds here. So we can pick up some more flamethrower rounds in one of the offices in the lab where we got to go get the ID card. The linear route where we have to pick up the ID card. Like we normally do as, as player in the Leon. I said in the past that I'm not picking up these flamethrower rounds because these were because I could just simply pick up other flamethrower rounds here in the G3. But uh, I went back on my word and picked them up anyway, so whatever. Just doing that so I can avoid picking up other flamethrower rounds here in the boss with G3, so I can scrape a little bit and avoid picking up the flamethrower rounds and causing them to be my main attention. But after that, we're just gonna straight up uh, go all the way up in here. I have no idea why the game decided to just not bother cropping with the button inputs there. That was kind of dumb. I put it in the right slot I wanted to, to go into, and the game just decided to ignore it. But whatever. Just gonna pick up all those items, same as usual, and just straight up leave. And also, I recommend not getting close to that door. Stay far, far away from that door as much as you can there. Gotta make sure everything's out of slot three. I mean, everything's out of uh, slot two. But you know, in the future, when I come back to the B scenarios, I'm gonna have to make some more improvement here. But um, 
the modulator right there in the B scenarios, you get it right off the bat in the lab, pretty much. Um, because the reason why is because the rank. The, the reason why I was put there is because of the rank on why I was put there. So, uh, in order to get an S rank in the game, pretty much, you have to beat the game in under two hours, pretty much, in order to get an S rank. So, pretty much, uh, you have to complete it in that particular time for the B scenarios. In order to get an S rank, you gotta beat it in under two hours, so that's why it's pretty much there. So, the developers didn't really did a whole song and dance with the lab pretty much here. It's like we normally do with the A scenarios, thankfully. Alright, so, right here, just gonna dodge around, I look through my figure. Um, I actually had to pause the game right here for a second, because I actually had to look up, I had to look at my SRT to look up the puzzle solution here to this puzzle. Uh, I haven't memorized the puzzles and the B scenarios quite well done a lot. Like, I'm not really good at memorizing the puzzles and the B scenarios so well here and there, basically, so I had, a, like, a little clops of memory muscles, so I had to use the SRT to remember the solutions to the puzzles. Um, but now I'm gonna just straight up, uh, really just straight up, uh, now. pick up the serum here, put it in slot, uh, put it in slot two. Um, so because we're playing the B scenarios and we pick up the moves later right off the bat first, it is always going to be in that slot, slot one. So we can just save off on the menu there. Just put it in slot one. Also, also Leon decided to decelerate as we're getting close to the solution there. So that was pretty annoying. Um, so we're going to, you know, for the solutions to this puzzle here in the B scenarios is blue, red, green, blue. So in order to solve this solution, just always repeat this after me millions of times. Blue, red, green, blue, blue, red, green, blue, blue, red, green, blue, blue, red, green, blue. It is randomized on the B scenario. So it's blue, red, green, blue, blue, red, green, blue. So it's different from the A scenario puzzle. So pretty much. Of you, of you fucked it up in the pattern there, then the run is over, honestly. Because of you, you, you have to, you have to prevent yourself from fucking up that puzzle pretty much more than once. Otherwise, if you do, it's just gonna straight up be a big, huge run killer. Because that puzzle will take forever to solve. It'll take hours and more than 17 minutes. I'll be fucking up once. Um, so we're gonna pick up those shotgun shells there. Because we're like facing, because we're like going all the way over here and put the solution to this puzzle, and we can like straight up decapitate those guys because we'll be in a good position where we can just straight up decapitate them, just get it over with, and stuff like that. Um, we gotta be a little conservative on shotgun shells up to this point a little bit here, but, um, anywho. Um, you know, because we turn on the lights early, we can just straight up run straight for the door here. And we don't have to worry about the liquor. The liquor's just gonna be an idiot, be a dumbass, and just gonna miss. Welcome back, Fuck him. You have because we turn on the lights early, so we don't have to worry about them. So they're fucking idiots. We're Welcome just gonna ignore them. So yeah, we turn on our lights here early, so we can just get things done off the, on the first pass. We don't have to go upstairs and get worry about getting licked by the liquor and do the whole stupid song and dance with the liquors here in the in the B scenarios. So we're good to go. Absolutely fucking good to go. But once I get towards the red dot, the the red blood on the ground, I start walking until I get close, close to the corner here. And when I get close to the corner here, I throw the hand grenade. And I'll take, like, one handgun bullet to kill that liquor there in the B scenarios. So, like, yeah. Take, like, one handgun bullet to kill that liquor there. Knock him down, get him out of the way. This asshole decided to just straight up take more shotgun shells to just get out of our fucking way. Trying to pick up the flashbang on the way out, so we don't have to worry about them. Um, 
the groom motherfuckers here on the consistent mode go down for a long time, so they'll be down for five minutes. It's like, yeah, we don't have to worry about them at all, so we can just straight up leave and get out of here. Screw motherfuckers, easy to dodge around, just ignore him. But they go down for a slow time, basically, they're not getting back up for a while. Take out the flashbang here. Cut the flashbang. Come over here. We're gonna shoot that group motherfucker in his face, cause fuck him. Also, group motherfuckers have a different animation now in the B scenarios. So, in the B scenarios, whenever you shoot them, they actually like to jump forward at you and proceed to grab you, even though they're supposed to take hits down and be unavoidable with no constant momentum. So, keep in mind, when you shoot them, sometimes they'll like, try to attack you as they take hits on. Like, they'll take hits stun, but they'll attack you as they're taking hits stun. It's a complicated it, it thing to explain. Do you have an animation, shitty, shitty bullshit animation time where they'll just, well, they'll just take hits stun and they'll jump forward at you off of the frame they're supposed to take hits on that, and they'll just yeah, straight up it's, proceed to attack you. It's pretty dumb. So, like, you have to be aware about that. I don't know why the source it is only in the B scenarios. Learning from the animations, um, I don't even, not even sure so much if it was in the A scenarios because I've never seen that animation in the A scenarios. But uh, I could have known for a sworn of a fact that that was definitely on the B in the A scenarios. So it's like a new animation movement, I guess, in the A scenarios and the B scenarios here. Also, the solution here is Murph and West and whatever. I, I don't fucking know. I lost track. USA, whatever shit. Um, I know you might be thinking, but Shane, uh, we, we don't have sh that much shotgun shells left over. I mean, we're running low, pretty much. Don't we need eight shotgun shells for Mr. X? Yes, but here's the thing. Um, we don't actually have to... We're gonna pick up more shotgun shells here because because we pick up the shotgun in the RPD, we have to pick up more shotgun shells here. That's pretty much why I went all the way over there and picked up the yellow gunpowder. There's yellow gunpowder there on consistent mode and hardcore. I mean, not, not on hardcore, it's like, they're on consistent right. mode and standard. There's just a yellow gunpowder there on consistent mode, I mean, on hardcore, and no yellow gunpowder in that other room. So, we gotta make sure we clip the flashbang before his fight start, and make sure we have the, uh, flame floor equipped. So, same as usual in the ace nails, we're gonna scrape, burn his ass, and when he recovers fast enough, we are going to run around as quickly as possible. Because he's gonna start attacking immediately, and we want to avoid his attack, and when he starts moving, that we need to, need to start running, pretty much. When he starts moving, we start running. I got lucky as fuck there, and this asshole tried to attack, but I got lucky and the flashbang went off. That was almost like I was supposed to throw the flashbang the second you get near the corner, but G2 moves way too fast in order to cheese in here. And he actually just trying to be a dick a whole lot. And plus, he moves way too fast and stuff like that during this boss. You just gotta get lucky and just straight up not get hit and get grabbed at that point there in the last phase. You could back up and go get a flashbang out of the corners, because there is a flashbang in the corners. So you just gotta prevent him from jumping on top of us and killing us with one hit like an asshole. It's all looking to RNG at the last phase. The last phase is like you gotta burn quickly as possible. Well, phase two is like the stress frustrating part about it, but like on the last phase, it's like you gotta get him to the last phase immediately, basically, because if not, then it's race against time before he hits you again. So you gotta get like lucky as hell with the bullshit there. So G3 is a piece of shit overall, so you gotta get lucky. Hey, I'm a gangster. You see me? My gangster hand. All right, <laughs> all right. So, um, for insurance plan, I have to pick up the sweat spray here, of course. Like I normally do in the Ace Nero's, I always pick up the sweat spray. I always just try to make sure I save like three sweat sprays for the Mr. X boss here because he's pretty shitty here. 
I recommend picking out that dagger just for like a little bit of insurance plan because there is group of instructors here in this area. Because Leon has to deal with group of instructors very early here and you have to be quick on killing them. I mean pushing them out of the fucking way. So uh hey bitch! Fuck you! And also, fuck you. Fuck all those assholes. Get out of our way. We can save three shotgun shells for the other final boss if we want. The actual final boss in Resident Evil 2 Remake and the B scenarios. Not the one with Mr. X, but um, anyhow. Anyhow. Uh, is this a fucking joke? I have no idea what I did here with Mr. X, but um, anyhow. But, uh, you know, CMS in the A scenarios, we gotta get a little lucky here. So, the trick with Mr. X here during this boss is that you have to hug his arm through the whole boss. And it is gonna be very tricky, and it takes, like, eight shotgun shells. We gotta blast him in his heart. If you get lucky and cause three hit stun onto Mr. X three times, Ada will drop the locker launcher fast enough. She'll drop the locker launcher quicker than what she normally wouldn't really do, but... She sometimes like to be a dick and not drop the locker on fast, fast enough, but uh, Mr. X six hits on three times and she'll drop the locker on fast enough and we'll be able to cheese him here during his boss. If we don't get lucky and call hits on him three times, but Ada's gonna drop the locker on slower. It's all locking on G-Base, basically. Got lucky with the dodge here. Got lucky there too. And he calls Hitson on him three times, so that's the end of the fight. Even if he didn't call Hitson on him three times, it wouldn't really matter, basically. You still completed the fight. He's gotta go lucky on the last phases here. Just hug his arm. Just stay the fuck away from his back. Hug his arm, pretty much. Like you see there, just hug his arm. I tried to walk a little bit during his boss and aim a little bit. I got lucky and he could have been a bitch slap there. That was actually scary for a double punch lunge. He's just gonna more likely do this attack during the whole fight. These two main attacks and we just gotta start moving the second he does it. And yeah, of course, because I got near his back, he decided to do a bitch slap. Whenever Mr. X is close to a rock, just stay the fuck away from him. Like, the second he gets closer to Rock, that's the scary part, because he likes to just straight up do bullshit attacks when he's near Rock. You know, just fuck your shit over it. And he decides to delay his run, and I got lucky a little bit there, because I could have gotten hit. And after that, we just got to get out lunge and stuff like that. And bam, we did it. We just got to make sure we save, like, two grenades, uh, two locker launch rounds at the end of that boss. Two locker launch rounds at the end of that boss, and uh, we save two locker launch rounds at the end of that boss. We could basically just straight up uh, get rid of him, basically right there, Shit. so we can get ready for the next boss. Um, so, uh, sorry, my throat. Um, so basically, uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to the iron box here, replace the original handgun with this handgun, and combine the blue gunpowders here and mix up handgun bullets. And Right here, this is pretty much an easy boss with this strat here. We got some shotgun shells left over, so we can use it here. Just make sure you didn't lose two grenades, and Birkin's gonna spawn right about now once we get towards that side of the crane. And start shooting... now. So this is pretty much easy. Just keep shooting him, and we'll lower his HP down as much as we can. So we'll use the locker launch around so we can try to get rid of him. Because we got some shotgun shells over left over from the boss later on, we can just straight up get rid of him. But that's basically it for the fight overall, pretty much. So when this eyeball opens fully, we'll just use the shotgun and finish him off, or you can just use the hand on the woods. And I clip the shotgun right about now. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed that run. That was my Resident Evil 2 remake, Leon's B scenario run. On consistent mode. That was my eat and 80% speed run of the on B scenario. If you enjoyed the run, uh, make sure you give this video a big fat like and follow me on my socials. Um, 
my socials are Twitter and Snapchat. I'll link them in the comment section below. And also, um, make sure you uh, subscribe if you're new here. Please do it. Hopefully you enjoy this 80% run. Don't be a selfish douchebag about it in the comment section below, by the way. Just be nice about it. But you see that right there? That's what. That's like. That's the way I want you to hit that goddamn dumbbell. That notification bell like that's I want you to like slice that dumbbell like that right there. The, not the notification bell like that. But this shit is like gruesome as fuck. And then bam, we're done. Enjoy the ending. Boyfriend and girlfriend? No. We're just... Uh, well, we actually just met... last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been one hell of a first date, though. Yeah, you have no idea. Look! He might be able to give us a ride. <sighs> what if it's not just the city? Get Cherry out of here. Is it over? I don't know. But if it's not, we'll stop it. Whatever it takes. Yeah, you damn right we will. As long as we stick together, we'll be fine. Come on. Hey, you guys can adopt me. <laughs> adopt? Uh. <laughs> we can get a puppy. A uh, puppy? And a parrot. Sure. <laughs> I always wanted pets. Mom's a rare genius. Huh. Next up on this boring Wednesday is a song to get your blood pumping. So that's basically it. Um, the next run I'm working on at the moment, um, uh, it is not really a speed run I'm working on at the moment. I'm working on, uh, a no save, no death run of Resident Evil 3 Remake. Um, I'm finally deciding to, you know, work on that, basically, at the moment. So that's basically on, uh, pipeline pipes of works of runs I'm working on at the moment. Also, I'm working on a some more uh, runs for you guys. Um, pretty sure the next run I'll be posting stat the the no safe no death run of Resident Evil Three remake. And then I have another content runs to record for RE, uh, um, RE7. I'm also uh, actually at the moment working on a Doom Eternal run. Well, not really, because I haven't completed my first playthrough, but um, I'm kind of actually a treat. To, uh, I'm actually work working on Doom, basically. Playing some Doom games, basically. I'm working on that as well, too. Some Dawn of Fear as well. I'm playing like the first Doom game, basically. You can't look up or look down, basically. My first Doom game, shockingly. But uh, you know that that that's like in the pipeline to the future routes at the moment. But stay tuned and stay tuned to all that. And I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching.
final time is recorded in under fifty minute fifty eight minutes in thirty three seconds. Now I'm sorry. Not to be a bragger here, but uh because I know society hates brags, people that brag a lot, but I'm not gonna lie here. I, I gotta do it. <laughs> I am a fucking god!